excited I am right now. Challenge three of five is Apple Annihilator. The basic premise of this one is the students are going to be building a wrecking ball using an apple and school supplies. Let's take a closer look at the materials. This is the STEM challenge cycle you should follow for every challenge. I've defined each step in another video. I've added a popping card to that video here, as well as a link in the description. This challenge is gonna take about 90 minutes again, and you can break that up over a couple of days if you like. And one of the things you wanna think about ahead of time is where you're gonna have the students build. Will you have them build their wrecking ball directly onto their desk or table? Will you have them connect to the floor? Or I, what I like to do is um, if you have cardboard scraps or boxes just lying around, I prefer to use that as a base just because then it's portable, uh, which makes things a lot easier. So uh, one other thing you need to think about is whether or not you want to be testing for total annihilation, meaning mark knocking down as many markers as you can, or if you're going to be going for accuracy. For the criteria and constraints, students are building an apple wrecking ball to knock down as many marker pins as possible in one release, and the distance from the hanging apple to the bottom edge of the pins handout should be at least two inches. For the constraints, of course we have materials and time, and the apple may not be pierced or punctured, and the students may not touch any part of the design except the apple during testing. Now if you have younger students, you might want to eliminate that last constraint and allow them to use one hand on the design itself to keep it steady as they are doing each release of the Apple Wrecking Ball. But if you have older or more experienced students, you might be trying to increase the difficulty, in which case you can require the design be portable, don't allow the design to be taped down to a desk or floor, increase the required distance between the wrecking ball and the pins, and have the students test for both annihilation and accuracy. When you are having the students do this, you want to make sure that you tell them that they can choose the angle that they let go of the apple as long as it's level with the tallest point of their design or lower. It can't be up above. So, and another thing is you want to measure from when the apple is hanging just loose from the apple to the first marker needs to be at least two inches. So let's give it a little test. Okay, so for the accuracy test, you want to see if you can hit just one of the markers and none of the others. So if you have um, younger students, you might want to uh, just choose one, uh, but they have to tell you which one that they want to hit before they go. And if you have older students, I like to make them try to do all three, uh, but you have to reset after each one, of course. And this time I'm going to aim for pink only. Oh, I didn't do enough of an angle. Uh, that's a fail on that one because I got the pink that I also got when I did not intend. So you might recall that in the Apples Aloft challenge I said you might want to pair uh, Apple Annihilator and Apples Aloft because you've got a tower and you've got a wrecking ball and those things go together really well. So this is an opportunity for students to try to knock down their towers using their wrecking balls. So whichever one you do first, you either need to store it and wait for the other challenge or you want to do these challenges back to back. Newton's laws of motion factor into this beautifully again. So if you have third grade, fifth grade, or middle school, you want to check out your uh, physical science standards. If you are a self-contained teacher, you need to look for your cross-curricular connections. The more you can get out of a challenge, the better. To extend, introduce or review Newton's laws of motion, Newton's cradle, and the conservation of energy. You can have students create a synonyms list for annihilate. So they might have words like destroy, topple, and of course annihilate on the list, and then have them assign value between one cent and one dollar to every word on their list to indicate shades of meaning. You can then have students use these words to create a descriptive paragraph. And this is an opportunity to introduce students to thesaurusitis, as I like to call it. So using those higher point value words can actually be a distraction if you use too many of them. So encourage students to sort of break it up and spread out their point values in their descriptive paragraphs. You can also have students create math problems based on their designs, and this is a great opportunity to do fractions as part of a set, and of course conversions into decimals and percentages. And if you have younger students, you can of course do just simple addition and subtraction problems. Um, if you use different color markers as I did, you might have problems such as how many more pink markers were knocked down than orange markers. You have all the basics you need in order to conduct this challenge in your classroom. 
And if you would like to know more or you want to save yourself time and energy and hassle of planning and prep, check out the resource. This resource contains everything you need, including modifications for use with 2nd through 8th graders. You'll still need to gather the simple materials, of course, but the rest has been done for you. You'll get aligned next-gen science standards for engineering and physical science, links to my STEM challenge how-to videos to help you get the most from each challenge, and the Apple Annihilator materials list. In teacher tips, you'll find premise and setup, how to increase or decrease difficulty through the criteria and constraints list, measuring results and cross-curricular extension suggestions, including links to videos, articles, and suggested activities to help you and your students understand more about Newton's laws of motion. You'll find an editable criteria and constraints list so you can tailor the challenge to your students. You'll find bowling pin templates to help guide students how to set up their markers for the accuracy and annihilation tests. For student handouts, there are two versions, four-page expanded room for response for younger students and a two-page condensed space paper saver version. You'll also find a set of group discussion questions. In the extension handouts, you'll find task card templates for student-made questions related to the challenge. Use them for a game of Scoot, a center for early finishers, or an option for subplans. You'll also receive math extension and process flow templates. This resource is available individually and is part of the discounted Back to School and Mega STEM Challenge bundles. For one-to-one -one paperless classrooms, a version for use with Google Slides is coming soon. Links can be found in the description below the video. I know your kids are going to love this challenge. I think that I could not count or tell you how many times I have done this in the last couple of days. Oh, and it just does not get old. Make sure that you like and subscribe. Next week, I'm going to be going over challenge four, which is called Apple Ally. See you next week.